Hey guys, it's Pete from MyJuryBunch.com. Today I'm going to work on something completely different. I'm doing some simple uh, assets for a prototyping of a 3D game. And the person who's writing this game is using Unity. So I'm going to show you how I created this basic chain link fence model for the prototyping and how we made it, how we uh, baked the images, and how we exported it over or brought it into, imported it into Unity so that we can get it to work. And here you'll see that I've got uh, the rigid body selected on this file for the animator and I also have a collider set for the fence so that we just can't walk through it. And if we want to, we can always jump over it. So let's get started. And of course, if you guys are interested in this kind of uh, 3D modeling in Blender and uh, importing items and modeling them, baking the materials, things like that, please let me know in the comments section below. I'll be more than happy to make more videos like this. Delete that. Okay, guys, so I'm getting ready to add in or make my chain link fence section. To do this, what I've got to do is hit Shift A, and we're going to add in a plane. So there's my plane. First thing I'm going to do is rotate that along the X axis, our X90. Okay, I've got that set. Now I want to adjust the rotation and scale of this because you can see here I'm off. So I'm gonna press Control A with my plane selected and I'm going to select rotation and scale. So we're gonna apply the new rotation and scale. Now I'm gonna go into front view. So you can do that with the tilde key. By pressing the tilde key, you can come over to front or you can use the one key on your keyboard. And what I wanna do now is adjust the size of the Z scale to 1.0 meters and that's going to adjust it. We want to make the X um, approximately three meters. So I'm gonna hit 3.0, and now I have a three millimeter by one millimeter section of uh, plane. Okay, so I've got that done. It's uh, the line, I have aligned the rotation and scale. The next thing I want to do is add in my links. So on a chain link fence, you know that it's kind of wrapped and rotated. We're not going to quite get that much detail, but we're going to, we are going to make this look like a chain link fence. To do this, what I want to do is go into edit mode. So I'll press tab. Now that I'm in edit mode, I'm going to press control R and put my mouse over here and I'm going to add in a bunch of loop cuts. So I'm going to get it to about here. That looks good. I'm going to press my left mouse button once and then again to set that. I'm going to move my mouse over to the side right over here, press Control r one more time, and now I'm going to make these uh, little squares in here. I want them to be approximately equal in dimension so that the plane is now made up of a bunch of squares. So with that selected, I'm going to press my left mouse button twice and apply that. Okay, go back into front view. So we're looking at this from the front. That looks pretty good. Now, a chain link fence, obviously the links are not square. You could do it square, but chain link fence are typically kind of diamond shaped. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna draw a box and select this group. I'm gonna hold the shift down and I'm going to grab every alternate line of vertices. Just like so, and I'll grab this bottom one here. Okay, so now with all of the alternates selected, I'm gonna take and move these over to the right or left, in this case, the right, and I'm gonna make these approximately about like so, so that I have about a 45 degree angle uh, between each of the triangles or each of the squares, so that it looks like that. I'm gonna press tab to go into object mode. And now that I'm in object mode, what I wanna do is apply a wireframe modifier to this pretty simple to do. So we're going to come over and with our plane selected, let's just rename this fence. Okay, so we've got that like that. And with our plane selected, I'm going to come over to the modifiers tab, which is this little wrench. I'm going to go ahead and add in a new modifier. I'm going to come down to wireframe. So that gives us a wireframe look. Now it's not going to make this solid, but it is going to make this uh, somewhat uh, dimensional. Now you can see that if we look closely our modifier leaves open spaces in between the edges so what we want to do is hit boundary and that will solidify up our model. Now this is just about perfect. Um, I would like to make this look a little bit better and I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second. Now that I have that set up the way I have it for the practical purposes of making this chain link fence what I want to do now is to give this a little bit of uh, a curve because on a chain link fence, we don't have these sharp edges. 
Now I can make these this thickness a little bit smaller and I think I will see how that looks in my model. That looks pretty good. Okay, so I like the way that is. It's gonna make a good chain link fence. I'm going to apply this modifier. Okay, so that modifier is applied. And if I go into edit mode, you can see now that we have lots of edges. And if I select all the edges, you can see them all just like that. Now, what I wanna do is kind of round off these edges because a chain link fence is typically made of wire. Wire is typically round. So what I'm gonna do is select everything, press Control B, and then I'm gonna pull this out and just add in a little bit of dimension to my uh, chain link fence modeling wire. So I'm gonna give that Oh, just a couple turns on the mouse wheel. And if I go back into object mode now, you can see that our chain link fence looks somewhat round, which is kind of what I want. And for a game engine, this is gonna be perfect. Okay, so let's just deselect that. There is the starting of our model. Now, if you look down here at the bottom, you can see we have quite a few faces and vertices. Um, probably not perfect for a chain link fence model for a game engine, but we're gonna deal with that in uh, just a little bit. Okay, so the next thing we need to do, if we look at this from the front view again, you can see it doesn't look like a chain link fence. So I'm going to select it. I'm gonna hit Shift D to duplicate it, press Enter, and then I'm gonna rotate this on the Z axis 180 degrees, RZ 180. And now you can see I have a chain link fence uh, made up of two meshes. And what I wanna do is kind of bring that over like this so that I get somewhat more of a chain link fence look from my model. Again, it's not perfect, but it does represent what a chain link fence is going to look like. Okay, so I'm kind of liking the way that looks. Remember, this is for an adventure game, so I just need a fence to stick in somewhere, and I can make several iterations of this anytime I want. So let's give this a little bit of dimension. So I'm gonna look at this from the side view. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna zoom in here with just the one selected and I'm gonna make this just a little bit thicker. Now this is where you could start bending these and looping them around if you wanted to. I'm not gonna get that detail with this particular model just because I don't have to. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this because it's always good to save your progress. Okay, so I've got that saved. Here's my model. It's starting to look really good. But again, I need this to be one piece. So I can select both of these. With both of them selected, I can press Control, Shift, and Plus on my numeric keyboard, keypad. And that should union both models together. Okay, so now I have just one model. And you can see it's called Fence 001. And we're going to rename that and just call this Fence Section. Okay, so that's done. And I have, a good, I have a good model section here. And if I look at my vertices, you can see I have uh, 31,000 vertices, oops, and uh, 24,000 faces. That's kind of a lot for a game engine. Um, if you're using Unreal, it's gonna work really well, it won't matter. If you're using Unity, like I do, it's, uh, the number of vertices and faces on your model does make a big difference in performance. So it's always a good idea to take your model, select it, and I can apply a decimate a decimate modifier right here. So we'll select the decimate modifier. I'm gonna drop this down to 0.35, which would be about 35% of the actual number of faces. And if I go ahead and apply that, you should see the number of faces here from 24,000 drop quite a bit. So now we've dropped down to 16,000, which is better, but not perfect. And if I wanna drop that even more, I can come down here and just, well, let's see if we hit Command Z or Control Z on your keyboard. And let's drop this down to 0.25. And let's see if we apply that. Our faces now drop down to 11,000, which is much better. And we still have an object that looks like a fence. Now you can play with that if I go to Control Z and we do that again. If I wanna drop this down to 0.15 and take a look at our model by applying this. And you can see we've dropped down to 5,400 faces and our model still looks pretty good. I think that works good for me. So that's selected. Um, now, to make our fence sections, we need posts because a chain link fence has posts. So to make a post, we just add in a cylinder. So I'm gonna hit Shift A, I'm gonna add in a cylinder. Now it's gonna give me quite a big cylinder and I wanna give this some detail. So I'm gonna drop this or I'm moving, move this up to 64 vertices. Press enter, it gives my cylinder quite a bit more detail. Come in from the front view, and I'm going to hit S and size this down to about 
there. And I'm going to hit SZ. I'm going to make this about one millimeter tall. Actually, we'll make this uh, about 1.25 millimeters tall. And now I'm going to hit G, and I'm just going to move this right over like that. And I can move it in just a little bit more so that we cover our section of fence down here. Okay, with that done, and I can probably just move this down a little bit because part of this will be underground, and I'll show you just how we're going to do that in just a moment. So I've got that down there, and I'm going to hit Shift D to duplicate that, and I'm going to hit G and then X, and I'm going to move it over to the side, and we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to kind of encapsulate the end into our posts. So these two cylinders represent the posts for our fence. Okay, that looks pretty good so far. I, I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to take this particular model of this cylinder. I'm going to hit Control A. I'm going to align the, uh, I'm going to apply the rotation and scale. I'm going to do the same on the other one. Control A, apply the rotation and scale. Now, why do I do that? Well, there's a reason I do that. I can take this model and I can export this um, into my game engine right now. However, it won't have a texture to it. And by not applying the rotation and scale, we can kind of come up with some crazy little problems. But uh, by applying the rotation and scale, we keep everything aligned correctly. I'm just going to go ahead and save this one more time. Okay, so there's our progress. Now, I tend to do one more thing. I take my model here, and I've got everything modeled the way I want it. And I have my fence posts. I have my fence section itself. And what I usually do here is I will apply a texture to this. Now, I'm in, uh, what view? I'm in uh, material preview, and you can go to uh, rendering, and depending on what render engine you're currently using, I'm using cycles. And I'm going to go back to material view. And what I'd like to do here is apply a material to this. <coughs> Now, for those of you who don't have a materials section in your Blender files, um, you can go to textures.com and download a variety of different textures. Uh, I already have an add-on that I use, and it's called Extreme PBR, and it allows me to use a variety of different... Um, uh, these are categories with lots of different textures to them. And if I wanted to come down here to, let's say, Metal 2, and I select Metal 2, you can see it gives me all these different types of textures for my model. And if I select model one or the generic metal, I have these. And, you know, I'm looking at this and I'm saying that looks mostly like a chain link fence would look. So I'll, I'll probably end up using that one here. To do that with Extreme PBR, I can actually just select this. And the reason I applied the rotation and scale was that it'll apply the material correctly. And then I come over here, select this particular uh, material and then hit add. And if we look closely after a second, you can see it adds in our material. Now, the beauty part of this add-on, which is a paid add-on, it is $100. I'll put a link to it in the description below on the, on the blendermarket.com uh, site. Um, I can come over here and I can edit the uh, UV, and I can actually go ahead and modify the scale and the position. I'm not going to go ahead. I'm gonna, not going to do that. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. Press tab to go back into object mode. I'm going to apply that same material over here. And we'll hit add. And there you go. It's applied it to that. So I also want to do it to the fence. So before I go anywhere, I'm going to take that fence. And I'm going to add that material to the fence. So you can see now, if we look at this in material view, it kind of looks like a chain link fence. It's not perfect. You could go ahead and model these and make them look exactly the way you want it. I'm looking for a very uh, quick and dirty fence just to do some prototyping work on. Okay, so with that done, and if I want to look at this in, uh, in rendered view, I can come over here and see what it's going to look like in rendered view. That doesn't look too bad. I'm going to keep this over here in preview mode so that I can see what the shader looks like um, quickly. Now, the next step I go through to take this and export it out to a, uh, a file is I use another paid add-on. But you don't have to. You can actually go ahead and manually bake these. However, I'm going to show you guys a real quick way to take your model and export it both as an FBX that you can use in a game engine or any other particular model. And it'll actually create the uh, UV maps or the color grids for the model um, to use in your game engine. So the, I'm not, these are not plugs for these 
add-ons. I'm not getting paid. I don't get a royalty for the sales, but I'll put links in the description below. I use another add-on. This add-on is called Simple Bake, and it's right here. Uh, right now, the current version as of this recording is 6.3.7, and this application is used by a lot of different companies that do game uh, artwork, and the reason is it works really good. So the first thing I'm going to do is select all three items, the two posts in my fence, and I'm going to hit Control J to join those. Now those are one object that I have in my uh, file. With those two, with all of those three joined, I have this section called fence section, and that works perfectly well. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit save, and I'm going to hit save as, and I'm going to call this uh, chain link, chain fence two dash joined, and I'm going to save that. Now that that's done, and I'm ready to bake the materials to this, I'm going to grab these again. I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode. I'm going to hit A for all. And just to make sure that I get a good UV map, I'm going to hit U and I'm going to come over to Smart UV Project. And that's going to recalculate my um, UV map. And I'm just going to leave the margin at zero. I'm going to hit OK and just leave it at that. Go back into object mode with the section selected. I can come over here and start making changes or um, get ready for my exporting of my uh, fence to make the material output for it. Now for me in using the simple bake add-on, this is a two-step process because I need a actually a three-step process. I'll need the color map or the albedo for the material. I'll need a normal map and I'll need a roughness map. To do that, very simple. I select my model. I'm going to come down here. Uh, I'm going to select cycles bake because I'll be baking this in cycle. Uh, I'm actually going to hit my baking settings. I'm going to Hit the check mark because it'll load in those preferences. Uh, under cycles, I can hit combined right here. These are the, all the options I have. So I'm going to select combined. I'm going to put a check mark in the direct, the diffused, and the ambient occlusion. And I'm going to come down to the next section I need to adjust, and that's the, uh, the UV map height and width. Uh, I'm going to use a 1K for this example just because it's a little faster. Uh, I'll apply the alpha if there is any, and we'll leave this at 32. And now we have these options, export bakes, export mesh. So I'm going to export bakes and mesh, and I'm going to come down here to material. Uh, and that's the material, the folder name for the materials that are going to be applied. And we're also going to say uh, we're going to export the, the file as an FBX file so that we can import it later into our game engine. And I'm just going to say fence section. And we'll say, we'll say two, just to put a number there. I'm going to save this as a PNG file. And I'm going to come down to the next sections. And here we go with our, uh, our normals here. We're going to hit new UV map. I'm going to give, it comes default with 0.1 for the separation. You could leave it there or change it later if you'd like. Now here we have restore original active UV map at the end, which would restore the original map to the new file. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave that off. I'm going to copy the objects and apply the bakes uh, or the new maps to the new objects because it will make a copy of this fence section. I'll show you that just as we finish. And we're going to hide the original object in the original bake. So I'm going to hit now, come down here and just hit bake. What's going to happen now is it's going to bake this fence section. And it did come out a little weird, a little gonky here. Uh, we might want to use a different material for this. If I come over to the rendered view and I look at that, it actually doesn't look too bad. It's given us some textures in this, and if I render this out, it'll look a little bit better. I'm going to leave it at that, and we're just going to go on. Uh, okay, so I've got that done, and here's my simple bake copy of the fence section. And here's the original, which is hidden. You can tell because the little eye is closed. Okay, so if I get rid of this, I can just come over here and I can hit, uh, actually, I'm gonna leave that there. I'm gonna show you in my finder. 
So using your Windows Explorer or your Finder, you're going to work your way over to where you saved your original uh, file, your Blender file. Now, remember that Easy Bake, which is really nice, it remembers where your file is and it creates this new folder called Material, obviously. And what it did was it put the albedo, the color map there, and it created a, uh, an FBX file for our output. Okay, so I've got that done, and now I need to create the roughness and the normal map for these, which is pretty simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select Blender. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to erase or delete the hierarchy of our duplicate fence. And I will re-enable the view for our original fence. So here's our original fence. You see it there. Um, I could have worked a little better on these materials because there's that line there. It's going to drive me crazy, but right now I'm just doing a test for this. Okay, so I've got the original fence here. This is still joined. It's got the original map. And what I'm going to do now is scroll up on Easy Bake. And instead of doing a combined bake, we're going to do a, uh, let's see, a normal map. So we're actually going to create the normal for this. Now, for this particular map we no longer have to output our fbx so i can uncheck the fbx but we are going to add in we, we do want this to export the normal map to our folder so i'm going to come down here with that done and i hit the bake button and this should create the normal map and you can see there's the normal map uh, again this material is a little wonky i probably should have selected a different material uh, nonetheless that's what it's going to look like and if I come back into my Finder or my Explorer, you can see now it's created the normal map right here. So here's our combined or albedo, and here's our normal map. Okay, we still have the fence section FBX, which is good, we can use that. So I'm gonna come back over here to Simple Bakes Copy. I'm gonna delete the hierarchy. I'm gonna unhide our fence section, so we're using our original fence section. And with that selected, come back up here on Simple Bake. And instead of a normal, this time I'm going to do a roughness scale. So with that done, it'll take a look at our model and, and calculate the roughness. Again, we don't have to export our mesh, but we are going to export the image file for the roughness. I'm going to come over here, select bake, and that will bake out our normal. Now again, it's a little wonky because of the model or the material I used. So if you get a good material that you can apply to your model, you're going to have better results than I will. Okay, so that's done. I'm just going to get rid of this duplicate and unhide the original. Let's go pull up our Explorer, or in this case, my Finder. And you can see now I've got the roughness map, the normal map, and the combined map. Now, these three, uh, these four objects here can be brought into Unity. So I'm going to bring you into a, an example or a sample Unity session that I have running. And I'm going to right click on these. I'm going to come down to Copy for Items. And you just hit Control C on your PC or Command C on your Mac. And I'm going to bring up Unity. So here's my sample section of Unity. And you can see here uh, what I have is my hierarchy here. And here is my folder with all my uh, assets in it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my assets. We're going to come over here. We're going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this, uh, we'll call this fence section. I'm going to press enter and save that. I'm going to double click this and open it up. And I'm going to paste in the four files if I can. And it looks like I can't. So the simple way I'm going to do this is open my Explorer or Finder. Let's get that opened. Here's the four files that I have. I'm going to grab these and just drag them into this folder. So now they are under the or inside the folder called Fence Section. Okay, so we're almost there. I'm going to grab this model here. This is the model of my fence. I'm going to come over to Materials in Unity. I'm going to hit Extract Materials. There are no materials built into this because I didn't export that as an FBX with materials, but it's going to just kind of plop in a baked file there. Okay, so now that I've got that there, here's my character, and I'm going to place this fence section in front of my character. So we're just going to drag this over to here. And with that fence section selected, I can come over to my materials shader and open that up. And here you can see I have my albedo, which would be my combined. And I'll drag that in here. I'm going to drag my normal map and drag that. Oops, 
Let's grab this fence, grab my normal map and bring that into normal. And for my height, I'm gonna grab in the roughness, and bring that down to height map. Okay, so there's that. And now I can change this and make this just a little bit deeper. If I want a more metallic look, I can increase the metallic look at that. And if we zoom in here, here's our chain link fence. It's a little low res. I probably should have done this at a 2K or a 4K map, but you can see there, so far so good. Now, what do I do with this? Now, if we hit play on uh, Unity here, you'll see that we can walk right through it. So let's turn around until we find our fence and boom, right through it. Okay, so that's not good. Let's turn off the game engine, come over here. <clears throat> let's grab our fence section. Yeah, we've got that selected right there. And where is it? Fence section. And we don't have a box collider, so let's add in a collider. And we will do, for this particular one, we'll just do a box collider. And that's gonna create a box collider around our model. And if I hit run now, I'm just gonna make this part a little bit bigger. So if I hit run on my game engine, now if we walk into the fence, we can't get past it, but we can jump over it. So there you go. And that's how I do the, uh, that's the procedures that I use when I'm creating the models for a game engine. Um, again, this could have been higher resolution and I should have done this in higher resolution and uh, how I import them into Unity. So again, if you want to see more of this kind of stuff, please let me know in the comments section below. I kind of love doing this. This is really fun. I mean, after years of working with jewelry and watches, this is kind of a nice little change. So if you have things that you'd like modeled, you want to know a little bit more about modeling them or baking out the materials in low and high res and creating low and high res models for game engines, let me know. I'm more than happy. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. And if, if you uh, like this video, please hit the like button too. Thanks. Take care, guys. Have a good weekend.